Welcome. In this lecture, we would focus on the most tricky problems for your CSET paper two, and some of the problems where typing mistakes were done in the previous set. So here, uh, the first question says Z is a brother of X. Now the statement says X is a brother of Y. Y is a brother of Z. That means X and Y are brothers. That's for sure clear. So that's the first thing. We do not know Z. Z can be brother or Z can be sister. Again, X, Y, Z are siblings, so we know they are brothers and sisters, but we do not know the gender of Z from here. So, based on these two statements, we cannot say or answer the question whether Z is the brother of X or not. So, both the statements are not sufficient to answer the question. D is the correct option here. The next question is how far is city P from Q? We have to identify the distance between p and q now the distance from q to r is given which is 4 uh, which is 18 okay and p to r is again given which is 43 now both of these distances are immaterial because we do not know whether the cities are in a straight line the the arrangement of the cities or something like that so uh, we cannot commit where the city r actually is whether it's in a triangular position they are in a linear position so even with both of these statements i cannot land up to the correct answer so here again both the statements are not sufficient to answer the question the next problem now this is an interesting problem understand this carefully now here we have eight people facing each other right so I draw two circles and I'm trying to point out two combinations here. Okay. So with the first combination, I'm marking the four sides and then the four other sides. Okay. The first thing that is said here is C is here adjacent to C, B or D cannot be there and opposite to C, B or D cannot be there. So I just say B or D can be at the following positions that's the most simple way i'm trying to solve this question first okay now when i'm saying this it again says a sits in between d and e so a sits in between d and e and f sits in between b and h so between b and h there is f okay now let me consider this as d so this would be a and this would be e let me consider this as b so this would be f and this would be h okay now all the conditions that are given in the questions is satisfied and i have g here so i can say c sits opposite to g clear so that's one case that i have drawn now let me focus on another case so c is sitting here i say that b and d cannot be adjacent to c and opposite to uh, c so let me put b here okay and i put d somewhere else let's say i put d here now what i do is i actually arrange a d and e in such a fashion that this is d so i have to arrange d a and e together and b f and h together so i won't leave any gap i would arrange it as d a and e and then b f and h so here would be g so opposite to c in this case is e and opposite to g is b in this case now this is d a e arrangement and here again it was the d a e arrangement as seen here b f h arrangement is there and b f h arrangement is here and b and d are neither uh, adjacent to c nor opposite to c in this case again b and d are neither adjacent to c nor opposite to c so in both the cases case a and case b the conditions are satisfied now when i have both the cases where conditions are satisfied what i can say from the given statement c sits opposite to g is correct but the question says which of the following is definitely correct so since there can be two different options none of these could be definitely correct because in either of those the arrangement would change so none of these would be the right option for this question clear the next question again on the circular problem the similar question but a little different here we have six people sitting right so here is the circle b sits opposite to c i have b sitting opposite to c and then i have six other people i say f is to the immediately left immediate left of b so f is to the left of b so right of b is this okay 
and left of B is this. So immediately to the left is F and then D is sitting opposite to E. So D is sitting opposite to E. So I would have A which is here. Now the question says who is immediate left of A. Now A is sitting here. So the right of A is C. That's correct. But the left of A. Who is sitting to the left of A? In this case you would say E is sitting. But the only condition I know is D is opposite to E. So it could be a case that E is here and D is here. So here it could be D or E. So who is on to the right of A? I cannot comment. Uh, so sorry, who is on the left of A? I cannot comment. The right of A is definitely C. That's for sure. Now the question asks who is immediate left of A? So read the question very, very carefully. Don't do silly mistakes. So both of these would be Together, E1 would be not sufficient to answer this question clear. I repeat again, uh, don't think, first of all, two important things that you have to consider here. First is the question, read it carefully, immediate left of A. Then again, what is left and right? You usually get confused. You say, okay, going in the clockwise is right, going in the anti-clockwise is left. No, that's not the logic. The logic is every person who is sitting, the right of that person, the left of that person. Just consider yourself to be at that position on the circular table. Consider the, your right and consider your left. And based on that, try to answer the question. Now, another question, a rectangular sheet, 20 centimeters and 20 by 8 centimeters, right? So this is a 20 by 8 centimeter sheet. Now the total area for this rectangle would be 20 into 8 which is 160. Now this sheet which is 20 by 8, I have to divide exactly into 4 sheets. Exactly into 4 sheets means they should not be equal but they should be 4 squares. So there can be 4 squares. How would I draw it? I would have 8 by 8 square that would be 64. Then I would have another square of 8 by 8 that would be again 64 okay. Then I would have so 8 and 8 16 and then you would have 4 remaining. Now I would have 4 by 4 squares so 4 by 4 so 4 by 4 is 16 and then again 16 so 16 16 32 32 and uh, 64 64 is 128 and 30. Uh, 2 that is 160 so that gives me a perfect answer so 1 is definitely possible here that's correct let's see the next option is it possible to cut the sheet into uh, 10 triangular sheets so if I want 10 triangular sheets let me first divide this uh, 160 that is 20 by 80 by 10 so I get 16 so 16 should be the area of one triangle that means half base into height should be 16 so base into height should be 32. So if my base is, uh, let's say height is 8, that's the height of the rectangle, my base has to be 4. So I can have an arrangement where I consider this as 8 and the base as 4. Then I have 4, uh, 4 and 8. Then it's again 8 and 4. 8 and 4, 8 and 4, okay. So that can be one of the arrangements that can be seen. So 10 such triangles, I have not drawn the equal number of triangles, but the idea is 10 such triangles can be drawn because with tri one triangle is 16, so 10 triangles would be 160 and 160 would match the area of the rectangle. So again, 2 is possible. So both of these are possible solutions. Again, there can be a scenario where this is 20 by 8, so I can have ten, uh, 10 square sheets of equal area. Okay, even if it is asked of equal area, I can have it and that is 4 by 4. So 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 together gives you 20 and 4 and 4 gives you 8. So 20 and 8, 160. So 4, uh, 10 equal squares of uh, 16 centi uh, 16 centimeter square would be the another option. But since it's, the question is not talking about equal squares, it's saying exactly into squares. That means no remainder should be there and that's the only concern. The number should be such that all of them should be some size of a square, not equal size of a square. So both of these statements are correct. Now again an interesting question. Uh, understand this question carefully. So there are two containers X and Y. So X and Y. 
x has 100 ml of milk y has 100 ml of water now 20 ml of milk is transferred from x to y so this becomes 80 ml of milk and this becomes 100 ml of water plus 20 ml of milk now from this mixture of 120 okay so 120 is the total concentration now understand of this 120 20 is milk and of this 120 100 is what 100 is water so the concentration of milk is 1 by 5, 1 by 6 and the concentration of water is 5 by 6 this is milk and this is water concentration in this solution right so this solution the concentration would remain the same now from this solution i am transferring 20 ml back to it now the 20 ml that 20 ml milk that's going back to it has some water in it so what concentration so that would be 20 into 1 by 6 of milk so i have to find out if m denotes the proportion of milk in x and n denotes the proportion of water in y i have to find the proportion of milk here and proportion of water in y that's what i have to calculate now when i am transferring 20 ml here understand this carefully this 80 ml was the original milk now what has come back is 20 into 1 by 6 so 20 multiplied by 1 by 6 why because this is the concentration of the milk from the diluted solution now what remains here again so from this 120 20 is gone so 100 remains but in 100 what is the water concentration it is 100 into 5 by 6 so that's the concentration of the water so here i solve this concentration of milk how much i get i get 500 by 6 or 250 by 3 no need to simplify however i am doing it okay again here what i get is 500 by 6 or 250 by 3 that means the concentration the proportion of milk in x and water in y would be equal so m is equal to n would be the right answer here important question understand the concentration ratio that we are trying to bring here i repeat again initially both of them were pure so this is pure 100 ml milk this is pure 100 ml water now this is pure 100 uh, pure 80 ml milk but this becomes 100 ml water plus 20 ml milk so the total amount is 120 ml of this 120 what's the concentration of milk 20 by 120 what's the concentration of water 100 by 120 so the concentration of the milk here is one sixth and the concentration of water is five sixth. Now of that concentration, I give 20 ml back to the milk, the milk bottle, which is 80 ml already. So that 80 ml would get 20 into the concentration of the milk and the remaining 100 remains with why but that 100 is at what concentration of water 5 by 6 so both these concentrations are equal and therefore m is equal to n would be the right option here the next question very important question sometimes we try to do it quickly and do a silly mistake but understand the sum of three consecutive integers is equal to their product so the quickest way i can do is 1 2 and 3 I add 1 plus 2 plus 3, I get 6. I multiply 1 into 2 into 3, I get 6. So, the sum is equal to their product. Now, as soon as I increase the digit from 2, 3, 4, nothing can be brought. Okay. So, things actually turn out bad here. So, this cannot be the option. Now, what I do is, I have to find three consecutive numbers. So, let me do 0, 1, 2. So if I do 0, 1, 2, then the answer does not match. Let me try another thing. I do 0, 1 and minus 1. Okay, now when I multiply, what it becomes is minus 1 into 1. That gives me minus 1. Okay, sorry, minus 1 into 1 into 0. That gives me 0. 
and what is the addition minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 that again gives me 0 so my sum and the product remains the same so my another combination is minus 1 0 and 1 let me go further uh, let me do it as 0 1 uh, minus 1 and minus 2 definitely not again possible because 0 1 and 2 was not possible but let me do all the digits as negative so what did it become it would become minus 3 into minus 2 into minus 1 which is minus 6 minus 3 plus minus 2 plus minus 1 which is minus 6 again so again the same answer so how many possibilities are generated 1 2 3 minus 1 0 and 1 minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 so there are three possible solutions for this problem that are created now note sometimes students have also done 1 2 3 minus 1 2 3 but minus 1 0 and 1 remains note this question is saying that they have to be three consecutive integers it does not talk about repetition so some of the students get confused here here there is no repetition of digits it is three different digits which are there and they are consecutive we start from minus 1 0 and plus 1 right so here three possibilities can be there so those were some of the questions that we have discussed uh, see you in the next live session where we would be doing the paper analysis for gs and csed stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead